For over 50 years I've been working in the science of crop production and my passion has always been about increasing wildlife alongside profitable agriculture. In this series I'll be exploring practical ways that farmers can reduce their carbon footprint, make best use of pesticides and help bring wildlife back to their farms. In the last few years, soil carbon has become a really hot topic. Farmers are being asked to increase soil carbon as a means of reducing global warming. But there is a benefit for farmers. Increased carbon increases resilience in the soil and therefore yield. But the question is, how can farmers actually monitor their progress? Today I'm at the Earth Trust, a farm and conservation centre in Oxfordshire. I'm going to meet with Arizu Tagisade Tusi, a soil scientist specialising in carbon from the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, and I'm hoping to find out a bit more about the carbon story. So Arizu, tell me, what is carbon capture? What, what does it do? Carbon capture means putting more carbon in the soil. Yeah. And it helps the fertility of the soil and also reduce the global warming. So it's good for us and it's good for farmers? Yes, that's true. But how do we increase this carbon? Farmers can increase soil carbon in various ways to add the carbon from the crop. Straw, stubble. Yeah, yeah. or the roots of the crops yeah. if it stay in the soil, or adding the manures or slurry. So farmyard manure, sowing crops that, yes. that put goodness and carbon back into the soil, yeah. herbal lays, these, these mixtures of grasses and flowers, all that puts carbon into the soil. That, that's correct, yes. But I hear this is, is, is often offered to the farmer as a, a very quick fix. Is that true? I don't think so. Soil carbon is changing very slowly over time. So we need at least 10 years to see any changes. We've got some soil sampling going on today, measuring mm -hmm. how much carbon there is in the soil and, and where it is. Can, can we go and have a look at that? Yes, of course. Great. Yeah, let's go. So this is what we've been looking forward to. So this is Alex. Hi, Marek. This is a very useful method to take the soil down to the depths of the one meter and taking the undisturbed soil out. As a column? As a column. And yeah. then we can take it to the lab and do the measurements of the carbon at different depths. Fire it up, Alex. This is an example of the soil core. And how old is this margin? It's about 30 years of the grass and flower margin. This darker stuff is carbon and it's becoming lighter, less right. carbon. I have some results from another farm. And you can see there are three bar charts here. Yep. One from the cropland, one from the margin, seven to 10 years, and another one from the margin, 18 years old. So you can see when you have the longer term of the margin, you can see a kind of the increase of the carbon. Which is what we want. And the reason for that, when you don't do the farming practices, right. and you keep the, like the margin as it is with yep. the grass or the flowers, you kind of build up the carbon in it. We've gained 20% over 18 years. Yes. And virtually nothing in the first seven to 10 years. So it really is a slow process. We're on a 30 year margin, so would I expect that to have even more carbon? I think if we measure that in the lab, we would have more carbon. It seems to me that the sooner you get in, the sooner you're gonna start getting results. Yes. But it's not a quick fix. It's a long-term commitment. Yes. Brilliant. Let's go and have a cup of tea. Yeah, sure. 